What's a core blaster extreme? The best way to strengthen your core. You put your feet into the power stirrups, you reach up and you grab onto the super rod and you twist and you twist and you twist. It strengthens your entire core, your back core. Oscar Martinez is running for state senate. He was wrong about China. How could he ever be right for Pennsylvania? Could Oscar and Angela be having a gay affair? Hey, and welcome to The Office Field Guide. My name's Chris, and I'm reviewing every episode of The Office ever. Today, we are looking at season four's local ad. Pam, please clear my phone lines. Certainly. Beep, boop, beep, 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 beep. Okay, clear. This is the first half an hour episode of season four. It was written by BJ Novak, who was nominated for a Writers Guild of America Award for the best screenplay in an episodic comedy but ultimately failed to win, losing to another episode of The Office, The Job. Local Ad was directed by Jason Rittman, who's a director producer responsible for this episode and the Frame Toby episode in the next season. But also movies like Juno and the Ghostbusters sequel with Paul Rudd that 2020 stole from us. Anyway, Local Ad first aired on October 25th, 2007, was viewed by 8.98 million people and currently has an 8.8 .8 out of 10 on IMDb. And here's your winning emoji sequence for local ad. Your trivia for today is what software did Michael use to make this ad? I'm a nerd, so I noticed what he was using to edit. Leave the answer in the comments, and as always, don't forget to keep an eye out for the tricky hidden Easter egg, Bloody Nipple Andy. All right, so with that, let's get creative. Creative? Is that, that's the best we could, that's the best we could write? I swear, sometimes I'm working with, this show is so frustrating to make sometimes. The only thing that makes it better is nice, crisp, refreshing Waterloo bubble water. I understand nothing. One of my favorite things to do in movies and television shows is to find all the product placement spots. Sometimes they're really subtle. This is weird. And sometimes they're not. I'm not saying that Sony's the worst about this. They're just unique because Sony both makes movies and they make a ton of products. So you can be certain that every time you watch a Sony movie, it will have a ton of Sony products in it. Jumanji. Pick a character and you're that person in the game. Bethany, you in? Then I'll spend my life staring at a TV screen. To be honest with you, before Jumanji, I didn't even know Sony made a phone. It's with our iPhones and whatever Android crap there is. But the science of marketing is very interesting to me. We all know what it's like when an ad shows up on YouTube or on the TV. Our defense mechanisms raise up and we mentally block out that message. It means an ad spot needs to be especially compelling or played on repeat until the customer can recite the ad. That's why product placement is huge. Whether it's TV, film, or a social media influencer, getting a product in front of your target market while their defenses are down is considered extremely valuable to the brand. This would be a huge coup people. In 2007, IAG released a study where they discussed the top performing product placement examples in television. Number eight was this. I signed up for Second Life about a year ago. Back then, my life was so great that I literally wanted a second one. Interestingly, the rest of the list were comprised of products placed in reality shows, meaning The Office was the only fictional show who made the list. Even more interesting, Second Life was the only product on that list who didn't pay for their spot. NBC actually hired a company to do the work here. They built the virtual set and created these avatars, all for a total screen time of under a minute. Okay, but back to the episode itself. One thing I learned over the last year is that outside the US, this joke didn't really land. Break me off a piece of that. I am totally blanking. What is the thing? Break Nobody tell him. That's because this ad. Give me a break. Give me a break. Break me off a piece of that. Get that off. Never aired outside the US. Which, if my analytics are to be trusted, left a lot of y'all wondering what the joke even was. I used to sing that jingle all the time. So for us in America, we definitely knew what Andy was missing here. Give me a break, give me a break. Break me off a piece of that applesauce. Chrysler car, football cream, lumber tar, Snickers oh. bar. Break Andy, off. Andy! Pull the band down, hair for men, boys and girls, extra sweet. Fancy feast! Break me off a piece of that fancy feast. It's a cat food. Nailed it. Nope. What I do know is that Michael's a blast in this episode. 
if you do not think that it's ready to air, send the ad agency back down here and we'll do it on my dime. The uh, geniuses of corporate rejected my commercial. Okay, I don't even know what to price this at. I mean, it's a three-man crew comprised of Amy Santiago's boring ex-boyfriend Teddy from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Detective Gordon Katsumoto from Magnum P.I., and this random guy. All the three of them had to do was get about five seconds of framed footage of a crew of office workers. If it was just the waving in the parking lot, then I think I'd price this at about a thousand bucks to get them to come back out to Scranton with their equipment, get the shot, and I assumed that corporate had already worked out the contract of editing the local footage in with the corporate commercial. But for this, I'm gonna say it was $1,500 because they might have had to rent a crane. It seems like the whole office crew is actually standing on the roof of the building for some reason. Anyway, let's get down to the deeper meaning. What does a bean mean? Someone please explain it to Kat. This is an interesting episode because it explores topics on the surface like marketing and creativity while giving us some realistic character studies and a lot of laughs. Yeah, I'm glad you called. Ryan is being a little bitch again. Come on, Michael. What's up, my brother? When Michael says, and thus, Michael Scott sealed his own destiny. In a good way. We think we're watching him pilot his own destruction, but instead what he creates with a small group of mildly talented individuals actually does fit his description. The ad we made, our ad, the real one, was full of humor and full of depth and full of heart and it was real. But it's not the destination, it's the climb. Andy once again dons his runner's gear, minus the nipple protection, Phyllis goes on a quest to get Sue Grafton, and Pam's also all in. I'm taking a computer animation class so I could try to do a logo. Look at that. Even the receptionist is getting in on the creativity. Michael is rarely a good leader at this point in the series, but a good sign of a good leader is their ability to inspire people to go the extra mile to pull off the extraordinary. I hope you're not killing yourself on this, because I'm sure it's good enough for Michael's ad that will probably be seen by no one. Maybe, but it's not good enough for me yet. Michael even got Stanley involved. I mean, he didn't bother to change his clothes under that jumpsuit, but this is a big deal. So Michael's ad, under extremely tight deadlines, defies all expectations, uses a very simplistic cinematography style, and focuses on the heart of people, rather than the soulless crap that corporate wanted to spin out. And tonight they are airing the Brain Dead version. So welcome one and all to the world premiere of Corporate Crap Fest. Man, I think I need a graphic for season four's writers telling NBC where to shove it. And shove it up your butt. <laughs> but in reality, I actually don't blame corporate here. Michael's ad probably would have done terrible, mainly because it resolves to Michael telling the world that he's creative. And also everything in it is trite one-liners that don't make a lot of sense in context. Dunder Mifflin, limitless paper in a paperless world. But creativity is what I'd like to focus on in the deeper meaning. As a kid, I thought creativity was a gift you were endowed with that can make you a better artist. But creativity is way more than that. It's the ability to form a concept, an idea, a picture, a workaround, a solution, a whatever. Something that is intangible in that person's brain and bring it to life in whatever channel they can. Putting paint on canvas can be taught, but the creativity is the ability to envision the painting before it even exists. It's what sets our species apart from everything else on this planet. But living in the ant farm that is modern day society can suck the creativity out of each of us. And most of us live in a creative vacuum. We have very drab, dreary jobs or schools that aren't, at least on the surface, interested in what our creativity can bring to the table for them. I've been somewhat successful in the corporate world, not because of my ability to code things or analyze data, but because I come at problems from a different angle. They like to call that outside the box thinking, but it's just creativity. I've always loved the idea of Michael taking credit for inventing the idea of a unicorn in his head as a nonverbal five-year-old. I was five, five years old. Couldn't even talk yet. I've also always appreciated Michael putting himself on the line for his creativity. I am willing to stake my entire reputation on it. Because putting yourself out there is always going to involve risk. And thus, Michael Scott sealed his own destiny. In a good way. I've always loved that Pam took an evening course to learn After Effects to create this animation. Wow. Because learning a new venue for your creativity 
will always require hard work. And I've always loved Michael's reaction to sending this file to corporate. And it is sent. They'll probably watch it right away. I, I would. Because it's how I feel every single time I upload a video to YouTube. By the way, I love that he calls himself director in this email to corporate. And look, while season four has revolved around Michael getting systematically dismantled, local ad, while still showing his failure, strips away the pessimism and shows what joy and unity that a group of people of different ages, races, religions, and social statuses can have under the banner of creativity. Michael, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. Next round of drinks is on me, people. <laughs> Yeah, or, or I don't know. I mean, I probably could contradict everything I just said because Michael several times is the exact same creative stifling that corporate did to him. People, no, no, I hate it. Oh, I hate it. Maybe this whole episode exists for shameless ad revenue. But with that, let's dish out some dundies. And then I gotta get him to the dundies. Man, I love this episode. Okay, the Dundee for the uncontrollable smiles goes to... Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> if it weren't for this subplot line, I'd imagine that you could pluck this episode and put it almost anywhere in the series. Regardless, I love Wilson's acting here. And the best pickup line goes to the bartender who'd become Solomon Grundy on Gotham. The animation was cool. Thanks. Hey, listen, you ever been on a motorcycle? Uh, uh. Man, including this director, some guest in this episode went on to some big projects. Kind of like how many actors get their start in commercials. When I was younger, I always wanted to be an actor in commercials. Then I realized I had a brain. This happens all the time. I'll help take care of it. No, I'll take care of it. I kind of know what it's like to be in commercials. Happy National Chili Day. <laughs> Anyway, let's rate this thing. This is the worst. Okay, I'm gonna give this cold opening a four out of five. It hits on almost everything that a cold opening needs to. It sets the energetic pace for this episode, it sets up the plot, and it also packs one of the most memorable bits in this season. What is the thing? Break Nobody tell him. What? No, why? Which becomes extremely popular around Halloween. The local ad episode itself, I also give it a four out of five. Here's the thing. They turned three episodes prior to this into hour longs when their concepts were pretty light. Well, maybe not fun run. That's actually just two episodes stitched together. Dunder Mifflin Infinity and Launch Party are conceptually pretty fluffy and there's definitely a lot of stretching involved to pad the runtime. Local ad, on the other hand, is a concept for an episode that I think they could have easily filled an hour with. There's this great deleted scene where Michael has Jim roleplay the producer of his commercial. If you don't let me pursue my artistic vision, I'm going to walk! Good, fine. I've got one Andy Bernard that will direct this puppy for half your fee. No, no, Jim. So really, the only thing I have against this episode is that it felt like Novak maybe got too ambitious with the concept for this episode and wasn't able to put everything in it the way he wanted. Either way, I think this episode's genius, and I'm still waiting on that cereal shop. Mike's Cereal Shack. I'm thinking we'll have as many varieties as you can buy in the store. Although I've heard some of those have popped up since. But this is just what I think about Local Ad. What are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments. I really want to hear what you have to say. Next week, we're going to be looking at Branch Wars. Well, gee, Jim, I don't know. I guess there's no sales call we today. We are oh, going boy. on a panty raid to Utica. <laughs> is what we're doing. And I've got some cool stuff lined up for that. Don't forget to leave an emoji sequence that best sums up that episode. Winner of that contest will get a spot on next week's stat sheet. Also this last week, a fan helped me set up a Discord server. Now, if you're old like me, it's just an app to chat on, kind of like Second Life, but not as weird. I plan on being active on it when I can. I also have an inner circle chat. That's a group of people that help me with ideas for the show, give me feedback, and they also get early access to the episodes, which if you're interested in joining, check out the Patreon. I really appreciate everyone who tunes in each week. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.